we're here. It's Friday. Welcome, everybody. Um, I've got a little bit different setup on my palette so that you can see it without so much glare. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to continue to talk today while I work on this painting of Charles Bradley, continue to talk about uh, my journey as an artist and making a living with my art since 1999, so about 22 years or so. And uh, I want to kind of get to a kind of a focus about, about working with galleries, how I went about doing that, uh, some things, if this is what you want to do, that you might want to keep in mind. Um, so the reason that I wanted to work with, with galleries is, you know, like, so part of this backstory where I started in the boardwalk in Venice Beach, and I worked my way out of that in the street festivals and in the juried art shows, and went to New York to do a trade show to get into galleries eventually, but that failed miserably. Uh, that's a lot of that's on my past uh, live streams. You can see that on my YouTube channel. But one of the things that occurred to me during all of this was that um, I could only do so much as one person. And I saw that to really get somewhere, I needed to have other venues and these street venues and art festivals and shows always required, almost almost always required uh, the artist to be present at the event, which means that I couldn't just like franchise and hire a bunch of people to go do these festivals simultaneously. Um, that would have been a lot more effort and a lot more work on top of everything else I was already doing. So that would have been, I don't know how to manage that. That would have been quite extreme. So it occurred to me that I, I wanted to get into um, uh, commercial galleries. And what I mean by commercial galleries, galleries that sell prints and originals, and the work is somewhat mainstream. I, I found that the audiences that I was finding for my work were, were pretty broad. I mean, there was a niche as far as sort of the Western genre that I, that I had kind of come up with after my New York Art Expo show. Um, but it, it it was broad enough to appeal, to, you know, to to make money for galleries, and so that that's kind of one of the biggest points I would start out with is that if you're wanting to work with galleries or representatives, you need to figure out how to make other people money, and that means whether you're paying them a commission or you're paying them a flat fee or whatever it might be, you you have to make other people money, not just yourself. And if your prices are too low, there's not enough profit margin or room for other people to get involved with what you're doing. So I think I would suggest if you're starting out that, or, or wherever you're at, that galleries should probably be not your primary focus as far as how to, how to kind of get started with promoting and marketing your work. Um, generally, galleries are going to want to sell work that they know already sells. Um, they're not going to, for the most part, on a broad scale, they're not going to take you up under their wing and show you the ropes and figure out your market for you and take a big risk. They're not going to do that. The reason they're not going to is because they're, they're a business, you know, just like any other business, and they're there to make a profit, of course, but they're there to, you know, sell, sell work that they understand and that uh, they think that they can sell. And if they don't see it, they're not going to do anything for you and you're going to be beating your head against the wall. So the way, the, what I did is I just, uh, after my New York show where it didn't work out very well, and I kind of went back to the drawing board and I, I started over again. I just started focusing on what was working, like, it's kind of one of the reoccurring themes is to just do what you know works already and build on it. So the festivals and shows were working, so I continued to improve that, which led me the, to the ability to travel farther away. I was doing shows in Arizona, Texas, and all the way out to Florida in the spring. And I did that for a number of years, and by doing so, I was able to build and cultivate an audience for my work in all of these different locations 
in, in big cities. And eventually, what happens is that galleries and representatives will find you and see that you're making money and then they want, they'll, they'll want to be part of what you're doing. But you have to prove, you have to prove it first. They're not gonna come knocking on your door. And I wouldn't suggest wasting their time until you've proven that, you, you know, you can take it to, the, you, could, you have a, something that you're doing is can be taken to the next level. Um, whatever, whatever that might be. So I remember I was doing these festivals and, and, uh, I think I turned, I was turning 30 years old and, and there was some sort of idea I had in my head that's like, I don't want to be 40 and selling my art out of a tent still. Like, there's a, there was a couple of reasons to get out of festivals. And there's there's plenty of reasons to stay in them. They they are lucrative. You can make money. You don't need anybody else. You just have to be able to get accepted into the shows. And um, so that's the main the main sort of roadblock is just getting a jury getting in a jur past the juries. And I generally was able to do that. There there is some. Times you get more conservative juries and they don't want to see, you know, a bunch of gunslingers or something. They might have some something against the kind of work you're doing or a preference for something else. So there is some of that. The other thing, too, is that the outdoor festivals, you're really um, vulnerable to, to weather. And I described a story last week where I almost got blew over into a river in Austin, Texas, before I went and got the proper tent equipment to to mitigate that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing is that as you get older, th they get more and more grueling. And I didn't want to be to a point where it was turning into some sort of like physical, like if I got injured severely somehow, that would be done. You know, if you broke your leg in some other endeavor, it could put a really big damper. So there was a lot of vulnerability to doing these festivals. It, it, it was very physical, not just driving around everywhere, but setting up booths and tents and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's a physically demanding um, way of doing it. So that further led my interest into um, getting into gallery, gallery uh, representation. So, um, oh yeah, back. So when I was thirty, I came up with a a plan. You know, I was like, "What am I going to do?" It's like I was doing these shows and festivals, and one of the the things about these shows is they happen. Some, a lot of them happen once a year. Some of them twice a year, and if you show keep showing up consistently, and people recognize that you're there all the time they will start looking at what you have and then just deciding, well, I'll wait till you come back next time. You know, like, they get indecisive. There's a, I don't know if it's just something about human nature, but this in, indecisive quality, people want to wait till some other time to make a decision about whether they should buy a piece from you or not. Um, so I came up with this idea when, that I wasn't going to show up to the same show twice with the same work, even if I still had it. So if I was doing a show like in Hermosa Beach uh, that happened every Labor Day Memorial Day, that meant when I, the work that I had in Labor Day, as far as the original paintings, when I came back, I mean, on Memorial Day, when I came back on Labor Day, just a few months later, I would not have any of those original paintings. I would have brand new paintings. And what that did is it created a, a sort of motivation for me to keep making new work keep producing stuff. Um, and it all, the idea was that, uh, so when people were like, well, I'll come back some other time, I'll see what you have in the spring or next year. Um, you can tell people that it, it might be sold, but if they see you showing up with the same work twice, that speaks for itself. So, I decided without explaining to people that I, these, these works might be sold, 
I just wouldn't bring them back. And when they came back to my booth the next time, they would see I didn't have it. And without explanation, I would let them assume that it was sold. And if they asked about it, and I still had it, I might say, yeah, I still have it, or I might not. I might just say, this is what I got this year. But often people won't ask what happened to it. They just assume things. And so I let them assume it. So that, that was the plan, was to not come back with the same work twice, ever. And it also creates a bit of excitement. People come to see what your new work is, and they see that every time you have new stuff, and it creates a sense of urgency for people who really want to collect something from you. Because if they see something you like, and they think, well, I'm going to wait till next spring or next summer to see what you have, and I kind of like this, but, you know, and, they, and every time they come back, you don't have what they saw before. They're, they're not going to want to miss out on it. They realize that after you come back to a show two or three times and you never have the same stuff, that oh, if, if I like something, I better get it because it won't be here. And so that action take, w w was taking up the, uh, the argument for me. I didn't have to explain it to anybody that I wouldn't have it or that it might sell. It just appeared to be that's what was happening. And th those sort of actions are always, or at least for me, they seem to be more convincing. And the irony is, is that when that started happening, the work started selling more. And I didn't have to, like, just catalog and hold on to a bunch of old work. The work actually started moving because people would ask for the older pieces that they saw last time. And, like, and they would buy it because they, did, you know, they saw completely new work. And I just said, yeah, I still have that, that one, you know, kind of implying that of all the work that I had, last time that's the last one i have or some something like that just in the way that i would phrase it i think but the, that plan kind of turned into a reality where the work was gone and you if you didn't buy it now you weren't going to get a chance next time because i won't have it and uh so i never i don't know if i never but i i didn't make a habit of trying to explain this to people i i let the I let them come to their own conclusions by what the reality of what they were seeing in my booth. Um, so uh, I was continuing to do wealthy shows, and I continued wanting to get in the galleries. And eventually, I had to get a, a bigger, even bigger van. I got one of those giant sprinter vans, and I was really undecided of what to, if I should do that. Because I was wanting to get into all these galleries. Hold on a second. I'm going to turn off my air conditioner. I wanted to get into all these galleries. And I didn't want to plunk down a bunch of money on a, on a new on a van. This van was like $40,000 or something like that. It was, but it, it would, what it would do is it would allow me to continue to focus on working on what was working. And what was working was um, these festivals. So rather than just sort of waiting around for the thing I wanted to do to sort of materialize, like I could not figure out how to sort of transition from um, selling at festivals to galleries. I, there was just something that these galleries I could not figure out. And by this time, I, I was working with a couple of galleries. I had a gallery in Huntington Beach that I still work with, Art Center Gallery, and one in Escondido Distinction Gallery. Those were the sort of two galleries that I worked with. And um, there wasn't a lot of, like, they didn't have a lot of answers for me in that area. Um, you know, they're, they're focused on what they were doing. Art Center worked with a lot of artists that were in the sort of commercial art circuit. Like, you know, the you might think of like the mod Michael Goddard's and like Todd White and all that kind of, and, and uh, I don't know if he had Justin Boo or not, but he had, you know, Thomas Kincaid probably, a few other ones. And, and um, so he was the, probably the, clo that was probably the closest gallery to the kind of galleries I wanted to work with. And I would just talk with the sales guys there and, you know, ask them questions about, you know, how could I make their job easier and all these sort of things. 
And eventually what happened um, is I got approached by some guys who had worked with other artists in the past and representing them to, to galleries. And they wanted to work a deal with me to get me into gallery representation and um, kind of go in the direction I, I wanted to go in. And they had worked with uh, other artists in the past, and so I knew that they, you know, I knew that they knew what they were doing. And so they presented me with a contract that would, you know, basically stipulate what they were going to get paid, what they're uh, wanting to do. And I remember talking to the owner of Art Center Gallery, Todd, and, and I asked him for some advice on this, you know, being one of the galleries that I did work with. And he gave me some really good advice at the time, and that was to um, make sure you have a way out. You know, what, what is your exit strategy out of this? Like, if they don't perform like they say they're going to perform, you don't want to be holding the bag and be obligated to performing contractual duties when they're not doing anything, if they're not going to be able to do what they say they, they want to do. And so I hired an attorney, uh, who's a copyright attorney, and with her help, I created a, I amended this contract. And one of the things that I, so one of the things that they wanted in the, in the deal was that it was like a three-year contract, and at the end of three years, um, if I wanted out, I could get out, but I would owe them a commission for all the work that they did from the, for the next several years, which makes sense if somebody is going to do all the, do a lot of effort to get you to a certain level in, in the, in the business. And then you're just going to bail on them. They, they, they kind of wanted a royalty for a certain amount of time or what, whatever they were able to get, get me to. And so what I did is I, one of the things that they had done is they they had mentioned um, they threw out some numbers that they thought that they could do for, you know as far as uh, gross sales and all that kind of stuff, and so what I did is I um, I obligated them to that number, and I had sort sort I implemented a minimum sales standard that was a trailing twelve month sales standard, and the reason for that is is like. If I worked with them for three years and they got me into a few accounts and then they bailed, I would still be paying them a commission. And if I was managed to like really do something that they couldn't do, I'd be paying them a commission anyway. So I, I didn't want to be owing people money if they weren't able to um, perform. And so I think the advice I would have here is if you're getting into a contractual relationship, whether it's with galleries or uh, representation or business partners, uh, you don't only want to have yourself obligated to perform, like to produce a certain amount of paintings or to do a certain amount of things. The other party also has to be obligated to this. They have to be able to perform in it as well. And if they don't perform, you need you need to be able to get out of the contract without owing them anything. So this is the angle that I took, is that if they didn't perform these minimum sales standards, I could execute the contract and get out and not owe them anything else. Um, <clears throat> and so what did happen with, with these guys after I signed with them is that um, one of them was in the UK and he had gallery relationships with the, the, the UK. And the way that the galleries worked in the UK was different than they do here in the US. They were uh, maybe more organized. Uh, Europe in general, I think, appreciates fine art more than more than the US does. It's just not part of our culture as much. Um, so they have, distribu they have distribution companies that um, both own galleries and work with independent galleries. And they also represent and publish artists. So they're a publishing company that distributes to galleries all over the UK and also to the galleries that they own. So they sign artists into uh, publishing deals where they pay them a certain amount 
for publishing, and then they make the money on both as the publisher, then as the distributor, and then as the gallery. So they end up getting like three cuts of that pie. Um, <clears throat> and so I was able to, so the management company I was working with was able to get me a deal with one of these companies. But the deal for me it wasn't that lucrative. Um, it was, so basically I was paying my management to cut. I was paying the, 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 the prices that I was getting for the work to the distributors in UK. It was at a, a dis distribution. So if you imagine that you have, you know, you work with a, a traditional gallery and then say they take a 50% cut. Well, now you've got a distributor that also takes a 50% cut. And then you've got a management that also takes their cut. And so it's, it, it, by the time I got down to it, like when I was selling work, I was making out of the 100% total, I was probably getting 15%, if that, on some of these works. But so it wasn't a lot of money, but it was, uh, it was a means to an end for me. So I knew that if they could be making money, I would be able to raise my prices and the, the volume of the work would then take care of itself. The volume of the prints that they could sell would make up the difference. Um, the other thing that happened, which I wasn't expecting, was that they just, the UK decided that they, they wouldn't be able to sell my outlaw paintings, like for some reason, like that, that won't work there. So they wanted me to do something else. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, and as I was working with the management company, we, there was a couple of things that were going on. They wanted something else. And I was concerned that I didn't really want to get pigeonholed into doing like Western genre the rest of my life. Like I didn't want to, but I wanted a way to do other things and explore other ideas. And so what I did is I, as a, one of the, as I, as I started doing some like business themed uh, paintings, that's kind of what, as I was in discussions with this, uh, distribution company that they, they seem to gravitate to that, that idea and basically all I did was I took my outlaw paintings and changed the wardrobe and technology and some of the you know what, what they were doing but it was all still the same sort of drama that I was putting into my, my outlaw paintings and I created a, a series of like business guy stuff which was the, the power love and success series in my paintings if you're familiar with all that stuff and um, and and with that idea, the the management company I was working with, we we kind of came up with a branding idea of calling it, you know, like cinematic art. So rather than say I'm I'm the Wild West painter, the cowboy guy, or whatever, uh, we put it under this umbrella of cinematic art, and that kind of came about as the way people always would describe my work as they've seen it at shows and festivals. They'd always compliment how it looked like paintings from movies, like if Tarantino was a painter, this is what it would look like, that, that sort of thing. So it seemed like a sort of organic leap to make that I was already hearing this from people. So making that sort of a sort of moniker made, made a little bit of sense. Um, and they did, they, they worked pretty well there. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> So this leads into something else I wanted to talk about with galleries is that um, I, I know a lot of artists like to complain about how much money galleries take and how they will, you know, some artist gets ripped off or if they, all the stuff, but you got to get that mentality out of your head. Uh, if you're worried about getting ripped off, uh, if you're concerned that, you know, you're not making as much money as you should be making compared to what the gallery takes, you're you're going to be fighting against yourself indefinitely on this. Um, like like I said, you have to figure out how to make other people money before anybody will work with you on this. And the more money you can make other people, the more it will benefit you in in the long run. So um, don't be concerned so much about you're getting the shaft or something because you're not. So, like I said, I was getting 15% sometimes of the retail selling price, but the other thing I was getting was eyeballs on my work all over the UK, and 
and that perception and that and that reality allowed us to go to the US gallery markets and say look at what we're doing in the UK and then all of a sudden I was not only in 15 galleries all over the UK I was in another 10 in the US they once the gallery started seeing that there was money being made on my work uh, they were eager to jump into it and I had a good team the guys that were working for me were were sharp they weren't stupid they weren't trying to rip me off uh, anything like that um, they were they were good at what they did they were good at opening these accounts and so that went on for I worked with him for about th about three years and while I was working with them, I produced the uh, the Lux series of paintings that I did, which we worked with Distinction Gallery in doing a, a grand opening in Las Vegas. And that was pretty exciting and pretty nuts. And they they did get my work into the hands of uh, some of some celebrities. Uh, <laughs> one of them was Ruben Fleischer, who is a, a direct movie director. And at the time, he had just uh, come out with... Um, what was it? Gangsterland, I think it was. I think he also did Zombieland. And yeah, so that was real cool. So there was a lot of really cool things happening. Um, we started doing shows and events, traveling around the U.S. And, and uh, I was, so what was going on is I was making a lot less money on the U.K., but I was getting a lot of eyeballs on the work. So that that was the trade-off was... Um, um, you know, there was a lot of building going on at that time, building of what I was doing. You can hear my cat snoring over there. <laughs> and um I'm trying to lose my train of thought. So we were doing these events and uh started doing shows and we I think we were running into a problem with some of the shows with like the difficulty of getting people there. So I had this idea that once you know, once you get into galleries, that things will take off, and you can just do the work. The whole idea was, I'm going. I want to take all this time I was, I was expending on traveling and doing shows and booths and all this stuff, and I wanted other people to sell it so I could focus on the production and making. You know, I thought I would be better off making more art than I would be trying to sell it all the time. So that was. That was the um, that was the thinking. Uh, what I didn't understand at the time, and I have a better understanding now, is that they don't know how to sell it any better than you do generally. So, like uh, when you have representation, they're going to sell it the way that they know how to sell it, which is coming up with their story and then selling that story to the gallery and the gallery then uses that story to sell your work. Um, but a lot of the stories were, I wasn't that excited. A lot of the things that they were doing, I wasn't that excited about. Um, and <clears throat> rather than go into all that, <laughs> I'll just say that, um, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> but, uh, cool. Um, yeah, so the, 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 thing I, the thing I'm trying to get at is that nobody's going to be able to take it up and do it for you 100%. They're going to do the best that they can with what, how they know how to do it. And and at some point when you have a lot of people working for you, it's, a lot of this is outside of your control. Um, or it can be. And so you'll have to make a decision at some point about how what your culture is as a business. And when you start getting into the size of, you know, of making a living with your art through galleries, you have you'll end up having to kind of figure out what what your and for lack of a better word brand is, but you're not a brand like you know like a bunch of like um 
a bunch of logos and stuff. You know, that's that's not what you need to focus on. What you need to focus on is like, what is it? Who are you? Like, what is what do you want to represent you? Like, um, you know, what are your own ethics and your own and your own um, ideas about things? And so that goes beyond just making the artwork. And that also entails like what kind of representation and what kind of galleries you decide to work with because some gallery operations are really like a bunch of sharks. They are good at selling stuff, but they are, they maybe they treat their customers crappy. You know, you if you walk into a gallery and, and you get the hard sell and then if you don't, if they figure out that you're not going to be buying anything, they treat you like a piece of shit, then you maybe you don't want to be selling through that gallery. Uh, but the other hand is like that gallery might be the one that sells a lot of work for you. And, and so you have to start kind of figuring out what, what you want to represent you in the, in the marketplace. Um, <clears throat> and I guess I really hadn't thought about that up until that point. Uh, I had a, a another sort of I think delusional way of looking at it was that you know if you can get into galleries get a broader broader audience and then the mere fact that you're in galleries would mean the work would sell and that is absolutely not true. Uh, so one of the things working with this uh, UK outfit was that um, they were all it was always about the numbers about anything. And they would come at us and say, well, the numbers, you know, these aren't selling through. What can we, they'd be asking for a discount or some other thing. But I often would find that they weren't really being straight with me because I would be, they'd say none of these sold, but I would be getting messages on social media from people who bought them. And so I knew that they were selling. And um, it was just difficult to work around that. I was like, you know, not being in the UK, uh, being told one thing and then finding out another is like, there's, there's <laughs> all kinds of crazy shenanigans that can go on um, when you get into a bigger gallery market. And these aren't things that are just have to do with the galleries or anything. This is just the way business operates. It's a really a form of human nature. And I think I think one of the v advantages I have I had going into this was that I I wasn't a, a new artist, so they were a lot of these outfits were treating me like I didn't know what I was doing, like I'd never sold my own art before, and this was more with the UK people, and they would <laughs> just come up with some of these weird BS explanations for things, uh, like why the work wasn't selling or what they were doing, like like they couldn't sell outlaw paintings for example that was like something they just figured that they already knew and they weren't even going to try the irony was is that people in the uk were seeing my work in the galleries going and looking me up and seeing all this outlaw stuff and then ordering it through the through the u.s galleries meanwhile we couldn't get the uk galleries to carry the work uh people the galleries couldn't get the distributors to buy it they weren't so big that they weren't nimble enough to respond to a collector who wanted a, an outlaw painting, and so instead of waiting around for the for the distributor to to answer their emails, they would just go over to the U.S. galleries and buy them from the U.S. instead, which was a benefit to me because I made more money that way. But I I I wanted the the U.K. to work. Um, I felt that if I had a presence there, you know, presence there in galleries, that being able to go to the U.K. and do events would be a lot of fun and spreading, you know, the um, um, the reach of what I was doing, it just was, seemed pretty exciting. So I, I didn't want people to be not buying from the UK and coming to the US market instead. I wanted, I wanted to get that to work over there. Um, so You know, without going into like a lot of detail about what happened between me and, the, and my management guys, because I, I don't want to like disparage anybody here, but we we ended up quit. We ended up stopped working with each other. Um, 
So like I said, the thing that they were doing very well was opening the accounts. The thing that was lacking was um, managing the accounts and keeping the sales going. And they could have, you know, I, I don't think I can completely, I'm not trying to like completely blame anybody for what happened, but sales weren't consistent. And I was going through a lot of personal dilemma, dilemmas at the time. And what I ended up doing, uh, well, we were having trouble in the UK, I think, and then the US galleries were doing okay. And what I ended up doing was um, executing my contract. Their minimum sales standard wasn't met. And I offered them a deal to reorganize and restructure, and they, and they decided to, to bail. But I got out of the, the relationship. Um, I had <clears throat> the gallery accounts that I had. I had, uh, they had, we'd pulled away from the distributor in the UK, was going into another one. So ended up working with them for a while. There's a really, it's really difficult to keep, to manage and keep UK uh, uh, accounts and business relationships in countries where you don't physically have a presence. And so while I still work with some, some people over there. My, I ended up going back from the UK a bit so I could focus on creating work that I, that I wanted to work on. And what I discovered through all this is that what's important for me is to do the work I really, I really want, want to do rather than trying to, what ended up happening with the distribution companies and some of the, some of the things I was doing under management was that they were putting a marketing in front of, um, in front of all, all of it, or putting the marketing in front of the art. And so that seemed counterproductive to me. It, it was turning into work that was not as um, fulfilling for me. And it was just a lot of pressure to create more, 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 faster, faster, faster. And that's not the way I wanted to do it. So I got a, I, I broke away from the, having a management company and took everything back over myself. Um, the thing that I had going for me was all this experience of selling my art myself and dealing with people. And so I would say that one of the key qualities to being able to work with galleries is there's a few things. First, you want to be easy to work with. Uh, you want to meet your deadline. So if you say you're going to do something at a certain time, you, you want to do that. And there's one more thing too. So you want to be easy to work with, meet your deadlines. And um, yeah, if I think of the other one, I'll, I'll tell you. So the, the, the other thing that you have to get used to doing is being able to take your emotions out of what you're doing. Um, a lot of the things that happen in business are just, they're business, they're just straightforward decisions. And so if people quit working with you or they try to get a better deal. I don't know, whatever. It often might feel like they're trying to work you over somehow, but that's not what's going on. It's just business stuff. So you have to kind of divorce yourself from this um, me versus them attitude. Like, like that they're up to some sort of nefarious thing. Uh, my experience is generally that the galleries I work with are all um, really, they're run, operated and run by really decent people that I like working with. Um, I don't, I don't work with jerks. <laughs> you know, that will, that will end up, um, becoming a hassle for you. So, you know, at some point, it's not a, it's not even about money. It's about doing the things that you want to do with galleries that support what you're doing. And you really need to think about galleries as being a business partner. And sometimes those partnerships work out and sometimes they don't. So like, like, Although I've kind of given you some 
dirty, nitty gritty things about what I did or how, you know, kind of a really rough overview of it. I want to really emphasize that I have, that I wouldn't have been able to do it without any of these people. Even the ones that were, even in the UK that was trying to like pull shenanigans on me. I don't think that they were trying to pull shenanigans. It just, that's what it seemed like. They're just, everybody is trying to make things work for themselves. And ultimately, I think that their intentions were good. They were wanting to make things work. But big organizations like to take control of things, whether you're doing with galleries or if you're an artist and you're doing freelance work, if they can, if they can squeeze more out of you, they will. And that's just the nature of the way business works. Um, so my advice is don't get, don't take it personal. It's, it's not, it's just, <laughs> it's human nature. Um, trying to decide if this looks good or not. All right, I'm going to switch up a little bit of things here. That. All right, where was I? <laughs> what time do we have? All right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was giving you sort of a the nitty gritty of how I kind of got into the galleries, but one of the things that had to happen to work with galleries is that they don't want to work, they don't want to sell your work if you're still selling it yourself. So that's the one thing you're going to have to stop doing is selling your artwork yourself, which was a huge leap of faith for me because that's the only way I had. So like, I remember I had this deal with these guys and, and uh, they were raring to go and I just quit applying for festivals. And I told them that and that kind of put the fire under them that they, they got to, we got to get this show going. We got to get income going. You got to start selling this stuff. And I just took a huge leap of faith. I also had to take down my own web store that I had for my website. Um, and basically put everything that I had created into the hands of someone else and just take, 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 uh, a leap of faith that they were going to do what they said they were going to do. And if I ran into the, you know, to the, if I got to the point where they weren't and I didn't have the ability to go to these events, you know, I would be in a really hard spot. But I had faith in them and they actually, they pulled it through and, and uh, made it happen though. But that's what I couldn't figure out how to do before that was how to um, get out of my own sales. Like, it's like they, you have to stop doing what you're doing and then sell exclusively through galleries. The reason that that works that way is they, a gallery doesn't want to, they will be putting an effort to market and sell your work, you know, online, taking out ads, uh, like Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever they're doing, they're going to put end up putting some of their own skin into it. And for that to work for them, they don't want to compete with you. They don't want to do all this work and effort just to have you get an email from somebody that they cultivated for you and then you take the sale and they're left holding the bag. So they don't want you selling your own work because they don't want to compete with you. Um, so you're going to have to quit selling it yourself. And that is, that is the, uh, thousand dollar trick or <laughs> question is how do you go from selling it all yourself to just putting it in the hands of galleries and, and make that leap. And so like I, I, I kind of explained the way I did it and the way I did it was by getting some other people involved who had already done it with other artists and so i knew that they that 
you know, that could help me get that to that point. Um, you know, you might, there's, I, I know artists that started out by working at publishing companies that worked with galleries and, and they started out that way and worked their way up. So there's, there's ways to do that um, outside of what I did, but that, that, that was, that seemed to be the biggest sticking point for me. How do I, how do I get there? And, um, yeah, I'm going to move this over here, I think, and work on something else. All right, so yeah, to recap, you, you got to figure out how to make other people money. You got to then let them do all the sales, which means you have to give up control. You have to give up uh, control of this thing that you're doing already. And that's probably the most sort of nerve-wracking part of it is, is uh, giving up this thing that you've, that you've built. Because by the time that you've built enough interest to get galleries wanting to carry your work, You've already got a pretty good thing going, so um, but if this is what you want to do, this, you're going to have you're going to have to give that up and start treating galleries as your as your business partners, not as somebody who's taking a cut of your money, because those galleries they do work hard. They have a staff. They have even they have rent over their heads for you know if they don't own their buildings. Um, the all kinds of things that you know make it worth it, and they cultivate relationships with galleries, so you don't have to be answering emails all the time. So they they do operate in the way that I was wanting them to operate, which is to give me a little bit more space to create the work. But it it takes time again to to make that work. Um, and so there's no shortcut here either. So the, if you're wanting to get into galleries because you think you want a bigger audience or anything, the galleries aren't going to make your life easier. You, the only thing that galleries are going to do for you is make an operation easier for you that you've already created. And the 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 their ability to sell the work is going to be only as strong as their sales staff is and how knowledgeable they are about your work so you're going to have to do a lot of work on helping them sell the work and how to talk about it and that sort of thing and if you don't already have that knowledge then you're going to be up a, you know you're back you're going to be up against a hard thing already with not knowing how to sell your own work, how, how would you expect someone else to be able to sell it for you? Um, and also, they, a lot of galleries have their own audience. They have their collector base, and so um, they're hoping when they work with you that you're bringing some of your collector base to them, and they're bringing your collector, their collector base to you. There's, there's a, a lot of back and forth in the relationship that you'll end up having with the galleries. But um, I feel like I'm getting lost here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, like I, I just keep reiterating, you're going to, you, this mentality of, um, I don't want a gallery taking 50%. Like, I give galleries 60% of my print sales. And I give galleries even bigger deals if they buy large quantities. So, <laughs> there, there's, you shouldn't have an issue with galleries taking a percentage of your, of your sales. They perform an important function so you don't have to do it. And if, you know, if you've ever run a gallery or tried to, it is a lot of work, and having the under you know having sold my work myself for many years, I I know how much work it takes just to do festivals, let alone trying to operate a storefront. You know, it, it's there is there is no sort of magical fantasy that they're just there collecting dollar bills. Uh, 
they work very hard at selling the work, but they need your help to do it. They need your help with what you're doing in your own marketing. They're going to need your help and how to talk about the work. And, you know, if you don't have the ability to do that, they're just going to do their best guess at it. And it may, it may not be the most effective way to do it, but they're only as good at selling it as you, as you are at talking about it yourself. And uh, so I guess the whole point is like galleries shouldn't be your priority when you're starting out at least. Um, you don't need galleries to sell your artwork and make a living. I mean, especially with the online, but you can make a, a perfectly fine living with your artwork, selling it yourself through either online or festivals or any number of things. There's, there's a number of ways to do it. Um, but if you're wanting to work with galleries, you're going to have to do a couple of things. You're going to have to get out of the mentality of you, the sort of disdain for them taking commission or taking so much like a huge cut. Like that's got to disappear from your mentality. Um, you've, you've got to think of the galleries as a business partner, somebody that you're in partnership with, which means like their percentage makes a lot of, should make a lot of sense to you. Um, you have to quit selling it yourself. You know, I think the I say I'd say the caveat, the uh, exception to that rule, would be collectors that you had already gathered yourself. You have private collectors that you've had from your own days of selling your artwork, and they come back and want to buy some from you. That would be maybe an exception. But even those I passed on to gallery accounts, mainly because galleries will, in the long run, if they're working right, will make you more money and more, bring you more sales than one sale will bring you selling it yourself. So generally, I would say even pass those all, all along to the gallery partners. And the galleries are really an extension of you and what you're doing. So what I was saying about the culture is you got you to kind of figure out like what it is that you want representing you. Like what is the mentality and the idea? What is the experience you want collectors having buying your work? Do you want it to feel like they were hassled in a tour spot and they were just pressured into a buy or something? Or, or do you want them to have a fun experience where the, it's, you know, buying, you know, for me, buying art should be something that's, that's fun. And, and when I'm doing events, I try to, that's what I try to focus on. I try to make sure that people are enjoying buying things that they, that they like. You know, like when I was explaining the not coming back to the same show with the same paintings, like, so that was a, that wasn't a heavy handed sales tactic. That was a, a, a tactic of creating a sense of urgency without, pressuring anybody so everybody if they felt pressure they were creating the pressure in their own mind based on what they were observing about the availability of the work and so that was the angle i would i was preferring to take hmm. and um Also, you want to look at what other art's being sold in the gallery, too. I mean, some galleries aren't going to be a fit for you. I mean, if you're looking for, for, for galleries, like, so I, uh, I never really applied to galleries. I never sent slides. I never sent requests to look at my work. I, I never did that. I worked with galleries that called me up. Um, or the, when I did approach galleries, I didn't approach them myself. I had management approaching them which seemed to be, I take that back. I did, I did at one point approach some galleries, but I got um, sort of just ignored. But the, the funny thing is, is some of those galleries that ignored me or just downright, you know, just laughed at, you know, just some of them were jerks, but, but some of those galleries, they, they ended up carrying my work when I came back, you know, with a guy that had a $2,000 suit on. <laughs> so, 
the, the galleries, what you're doing when you're working with galleries is that, so you're giving up your sales to the public and you're selling to the galleries. So you have to take your experience and knowledge about selling your own work and then you have to sell it to the galleries and get them to understand what you're, what you're buying. The other thing that you want to do when you're working with representative, like so when I men mentioned the representatives, they, they had, I, to the contract I had, they, they were held to a sales standard. And um, when you're working with galleries, you want galleries to have some sort of skin in the game. Um, so a lot of the galleries I work with own, own, own the work. They've bought pieces. Some of it's on consignment. Um, but they have to have something like, so a lot of the galleries are, are framing the work. A lot of the galleries have frame shops, so they will take at their own expense and frame up the artwork. And that's the risk that they're taking, is that if it doesn't sell and I need it to sell to somebody else or another gallery sells it, I have to pull it back. And then they spent the money on the frame, and that was their risk. But if they sell it, then they also make money on the frame. So that's, that's, that's what, a, lot, a lot of what they're doing, especially with the originals and stuff. But as you do this, like I trade frames with galleries all the time. There's there's ways to work around that too. So being easy to work with, meet your deadlines, and you know just mainly don't be a jerk. Don't don't have a bad attitude. Those are probably the biggest things that you can do. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself. It's pretty close to four o'clock, so I might shut it down here in a second. Well, I hope you guys got something out of this one. And I uh, hope I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> My calories, so I kind of give some nitty gritty details about how I did this stuff. But um, it's all right. It's like not that many people are listening to it anyway. Um, you guys have any questions about working with galleries? Feel free to comment on the on us. Um, you can message me or email me if you want. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I've not seen doing this. Like I've kind of feels like I've seen. You know, nobody's thrown me a curveball question yet when it comes to like galleries and what to expect with them and how to deal with with them and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, these. When you're working with galleries, they are your business partners, and you rely on them. And um, the the reason they get paid what they get paid is because they're they should be worth it. And if you don't have the, if you can't afford to give galleries fifty percent of uh, retail pricing, then you're not ready for galleries yet. Your prices have to come to a point where there's enough room for people to make money besides you on it. So I guess I'll end with that. It's, it's working. It's not all about you <laughs> when you're working with galleries or representation or anything like that. All right. So I think I'll close it up there. Maybe. Yep, I think I'll quit it. I'll, I'll close it up there. All right, everybody. I hopefully we'll see you next week. Uh, like I said, leave me a comment if you have questions, and I will try to get back to it.